Is this the tokenized assets bull run? Today we're going to be checking out a couple of projects that you guys will recognize and also take a look at the future of where tokenized assets are going. You don't, don't want to miss this one. My name is Paul Barrow. Welcome back to TechPath. All right, let's get into it today. I want to thank our sponsor. That's Fairdesk. Smooth trading, accurate copy trading. You guys can do that. Always trusting Fairdesk. They've got a lot of pairs available over there. Here's the cool thing about Fairdesk. If you are United States, Germany, some of these uh, limited countries that have been out there, you can actually get into Fairdesk with no KYC, no VPN required. We'll see how long that lasts. But the good thing is it is available to you right now. The simplicity, I think, is a big part of that. So if you're just getting into trading, you want to try something out, check out Fairdesk. Use our link, and of course, it gives you a little bit of a discount. So go there. Let's get into a couple of things here I want to hit on, and I'm going to talk about the global sneaker market. Uh, when you look at the size of sneakers, collectibles, this has been just an uptrend really since all the way back uh, here in 2023. You can kind of see 91 billion looking to grow to around 145 billion. Pretty significant growth, and I don't know that this is really going to take into consideration a lot of the opportunity in the digital asset side. So this is just to kind of frame up uh, some of the things that are going to hit the tokenized asset space. And you look at where maybe shopping is going to be going. You look at the opportunity of some of these collectible communities. Let's go to this clip right here. This will kind of explain a little bit more around the shopping integration with AR. Since I got my Apple Vision Pro headset, I've discovered a very cool app that offers an immersive online shopping experience for, that's right, kicks. And for instance, when I select one of these Instagram photos, it tells me what type of shoe they're wearing with their outfit. StockX gradually transforms your room into a sneaker paradise. Each shoe is rendered in full 3D and adapts to the incoming light. When you've finally made your choice, you can interact with the market data to decide on your offer and can then select a size, make adjustments to the price and proceed to check out. It's mind-blowing how you can now order shoes from within a headset, right? And have them arrive at your doorstep shortly after. Reminding me so much of that one shopping scene in the movie Ready Player One. This is going to come to the MetaQuest most likely, which is a lot more approachable. And the likelihood of more integrated shopping definitely going to be happening, especially when you think about Instagram, Meta, all that connectivity there for sure. Another clip here will show how some of the brands are starting to reach out into these virtual worlds and what it might look like. Here's Reebok, take a look. This is, of course, on the XRP Ledger. This is one of the connections into Futureverse. And we've talked about that before. Go back and check out some of our videos around what Futureverse is and how it could connect to kind of the next generation of Metaverse. So you can kind of see some of the interaction here that's being done. What this means is a lot more creator interaction. The experience offers up to four digital sneaker cre uh, creations, uh, which you can pretty much use anywhere whether it's into Roblox, get into some of these interoperable experiences and start to put your own asset into these games and also other, you know, virtual metaverses out there. So I think this is, uh, again, this gets back into the physical digital. We'll explain that in a second. One thing to note on this tweet right here is the integration may be into something like fitness. And we've talked about this a little bit before. These are the kind of creativity elements that I think we're going to see in a lot of these digital products in the future. Now, whether we see a physical production of that, I think that's still yet to be determined. Pretty crazy to be able to go into in-game assets uh, pretty soon. So lots happening. So here you can kind of see uh, this is, of course, going to be integrated into Ready Player One, just another ex uh, extension of how these digital assets will be used. All right, here's Life Like Digital. Jim Vibe, we did a video on this not too long ago around its connection to Futureverse, and they're already talking about it right here. Can't wait to work out in these uh, in XR. And that, I think, is going to be the point. You're going to find it to where your gym teachers and your AI integration is going to have those kind of functions. And remember, brand IP 
is going to be huge, especially in the fitness space. Imagine if you could have a Lulu Lemon for yoga or all sorts of sneaker brands that could be integrated into this in a way, especially if you, if you have one of these uh, games that end up going viral on one of these AR headsets. So a lot of opportunity here. The other thing is the shopping component, which is uh, very interesting. Here's Snapchat, uh, and it shows a little bit more around the future of where this is going. Take a look. Is this going to look good on me? I get that it looks amazing on this model, but guess what? I'm not that model, so how will I know it's going to look good on me? 40% of people are actually saying that the reason why they abandon their carts is because they just don't want to have to deal with a return. On the other side of that, return rates are huge. 30 to 50% return rate online compared to 5 to 10% if you're in-store. Things like loyalty at an all-time low. You know, digital fashion and digital goods is an emerging area that we're so excited to see some incredible AR developers build with Snap's AR technology, um, whether that's a dress X or whether that's an artifact with Nike, uh, thinking about the future of things like sneakers. There's now 250 million people who have virtually tried on products five billion times over the past year alone. Whether they're seeing a 25% decrease in returns or a 119% increase in intent to go purchase because of this. Uh, especially in things like sneakers, because I think sneakers are a little bit easier to fit. You know, you don't have those nuances in a fit that may not necessarily make its way into an AR rendering. But getting that 3D rendering and seeing that, you know, almost like in a virtual re reality environment or an augmented reality environment, I think that will lower the amount of returns and probably increase that brand affinity that she's talking about. Uh, this is a clip that shows a little bit about StockX and Nike. Now, this is a situation that's starting to brew, and I think this is going to happen a lot more, especially around IP as we start to see things uh, kind of trans uh, transpire in this area. Uh, but listen to this clip. When we're talking about the number one sneaker resale platform, everyone seems to have turned against them. YouTubers, influencers, resellers, former clients, and even Nike itself. Nike claims to have received not just two or three fakes, but 78, as Nike seems determined to take them down. So here's what happened. It all started when Nike filed a lawsuit against StockX for their NFTs, which Nike claimed these NFTs were a trademark infringement on their product. It actually includes a picture of this pair of sneakers, and you can can see it has the StockX verified hang tag. And Nike's filing also went on to say that StockX is somehow proprietary authentication service claims to use over 100 data points and that its authenticators are better equipped than anyone to verify a shoe's legitimacy. Despite the fact that StockX is not the entity that designed, created, manufactured, packaged, or shipped in the first instance any genuine Nike product. In reality, they're like a middleman similar to Uber that connects by and sellers and simply takes commission and processing fees. The number of employees does not automatically adapt to each new order like at Uber. StockX's authentication system isn't scalable and it's still up to StockX to manually manage their fixed workforce of employees to handle the thousands of daily orders on the platform. Something that Josh Luber, the founder of StockX, found perfectly normal when he spoke about a crazy pace of 20,000 pairs authenticated per day with only 40 employees, where they were basically thrown into a work plan and told to figure it out and process sneaker authentication. Companies like uh, StockX probably going to continue to see a spiral in a downward turn. I want to jump over to the tokenized asset side because this is also trending toward what's happening with XRP and Ripple. And it starts in the diamond category. So let me kind of jump to that. As you can see, here's Timons. Uh, they're actually doing a tokenized experience for diamonds and they're tying this into a marketplace the whole concept here let me show you a little bit about them here's tokenized diamonds right here so you can kind of go in and see exactly what's happening all the way into the you know the color level clarity so this is something that we're probably going to see a lot more of and we talked about this with gold we've talked about this with other real world assets especially in the luxury space that could end up being a huge opportunity this is a clip that kind of dump, jumps into that a little bit more and how it works with redeeming these diamonds themselves. Listen in. Uh, is it easy for me to exchange it to the real asset like the to, to real diamond? Oh. Once you redeem it, we are sending this box, okay. which is open box, and inside you oh. get your diamond here, oh. a name chart of the project, and then inside, which is oh. here, that's the fact of the story. This is the certification, right? Oh, wow, wow, wow. So, 
really amazing. So as you can see, there's a lot happening in tokenized assets. One of the areas is gold and gold bugs, because gold bugs, I think, are you know companies or people that are, have been interested in Bitcoin in the past. Could they get interested in something else if there's an opportunity for a real world asset to actually get tokenized? Look at this next clip. Now, I just got back from the XRP event. Now, this was a crypto event, and I was frankly completely blown away by the reception <laughs> that I received. People that buy cryptos have a similar desire to people that buy gold. So we need to have a seat at the table, and you can't do it by standing back and going, well, I just don't like this, I just don't like this. Do you believe in XRP? Maybe, but I don't know. So I am, I am waiting and watching and paying attention. Would I put everything into a tokenized asset, any asset? No, I would not. I'm always going to want to have my physical gold as well as my physical silver. When I see who survives, then I will have that answer. Well, there you go. You've got uh, someone who's been a very bullish. I think that's not like the female Peter Schiff version. But one thing that has already happened is HSBC. They already made uh, tokenized gold available in Hong Kong, and this is to retail clients available. I want to show you something, though. This is, of course, right here. This is this year, March 2024. Here's another example of this. This is Ripple talking a little bit more about their partnership with Metaco. Listen in. You know, trying to find, Ripple trying to be like a sort of one-stop shop for institutional adoption of crypto and trying to provide a platform that would provide access to the XRP ledger, to tokenization, to pay payments particularly. Like there had, to, there had to be a secure custody solution in there somewhere. And then uh, in May, we acquired Medico. It was a huge acquisition, a quarter of a billion dollars, Ripple's largest acquisition ever. You know, custody is a massive market, you know, something like $10 trillion by 2030. And, you know, the increases in tokenization, you know, in the early days of Ripple, another thing I learned talking to banks is that a lot of banks don't care about payments and they're looking at things like digital asset insurance. Um, they're looking at tokenized commodities like gold. Um, so I think those are uh, tokenized securities. Um, HSBC is extremely interested in those types of uh, those types of um, projects. They're, they're, they're Orion project, which was to a tokenized gold. So just to kind of back this up, there's the article right here, HSBC to launch tokenized securities. This is the custody service with Ripple and Medico. A uh, little bit of point on this. Uh, they're working with Ripple owned Swiss-based crypto infrastructure, Medico introducing custody service for digital assets such as tokenized securities. So again, HSBC already accelerating uh, in this space. In recent news, this is another institution that has started to move in this direction as well. SBI just happened today started a node of operation as a validator for XRP. And one of the things that I think is unique, not no pun intended, is their unique node list. I'll get to that in a second. Further into the article right here, it says it's recognized as the best L1 public chain for business use cases. They're talking about Ripple. And SBI com companies have also had a long history of using XRP Leisure through Ripple. So this is a match, again, very similar to what HSBC is what Medico is, you can start to see the dominoes being put together here. And I think Ripple is in a very interesting spot right now. So when you look at the size of SBI holdings, this is 2023, 22.3 uh, trillion. In today's money, it's about 140 billion in US, obviously between the yen and the, and the US dollar. So again, big opportunities here for Ripple and a lot of moving parts. This just showcases a little bit more around what SBI is doing very big in the space of understanding crypto and also Web3 as well. This, of course, is going to be, I think, a huge opportunity uh, kind of putting this all together. This is interesting because SBI is going to kind of enter the game here, but the trusted publishers, Ripple Coil, XRP Ledger Foundation, uh, those are the ones that have been kind of the core here. SBI, I think, is getting ready to be in this uh, cohort as well. So a lot of opportunity here for Ripple going forward, especially around tokenized assets. Here's the list of all Ripple partnerships. You can, of course, see all these different, man, this is, <laughs> this is crazy. But these are all, there's SBI Holdings right there, just bank after bank after bank after bank. I mean, there it is, guys. This is, and that's just, this is probably just what is in, you know, the coffer right now versus the deals that they're probably working today to start to execute this even more. So if this is going to be a bull run for XRP or for Ripple, 
tokenized assets are going to be the vehicle that this is going to, uh, I think, transact around. And if you follow where the money is going, you probably would agree. Here's a clip to talk about that. BNY Mellon is the world's largest custodial bank. They're the bank that your banks bank with. And they did a study of uh, institutional asset managers to get their opinions on what they think about this space. And that report found that 97% of asset managers believe that tokenization will revolutionize the asset management industry. The ones with more than a trillion dollars, basically the largest asset managers, 100% of them are interested in this space. So I don't know about you, but I have always been told, follow the money. And this is where the money is going. And if you do follow the money and you also follow the major moves of key executives, because that usually is another indicator, here's one right here. BNY Mellon's head of digital asset product departs for, guess what, Ripple. So do you guys see this? I mean, do you, hopefully you're watching this right now and you're thinking this is the potential you know, bellwether component of the market that is going to start to really perk its head up there in terms of real world assets and tokenized securities all starting to become part of this whole blockchain ecosystem. So this, of course, is XRP's uh, Ledger Apex 2024. This is going to be held in Amsterdam here in June. So not too long away. This is where they're going to announce their stable coin. This is where they're going to announce all sorts of partnerships the ecosystem, real world asset, tokeniz tokenization, all of that major, uh, major uh, updates, of course, and of course, kind of the future of the XRP uh, ledger ecosystem all happening. So further, if you look into the sponsors, you've got quite a few in here, Flowdesk in there, uh, SBI, and so on. So you can kind of see some great opportunities here, guys, definitely going uh, forward with, uh, with where Ripple is heading. Another uh, clip I want to get into is um, Brad Garlinghouse. And sometimes he says things jokingly that sometimes come true. Listen to this one. Uh, certainly a lot of our investment, our incremental new investment in 2024 will be investing in the custody business. Uh, that, is, that in, is that in anticipation of sort of some of these bigger investors getting in to the markets and well, I mean, I, on one hand, I say yes. However, there's already a tremendous amount of demand. It's a month or two ago, the HSBC is a new uh, client of that business. You know, I do think Ripple thinks about entering other vertical markets. So payments, custody, I think we'll do other things in 2024. Some of those will probably enter through acquisition. The, the valuations of a lot of these companies is not what it once was. That's been an opportunity for us. And so we're, we're going to continue to play offense. And what are the areas that interest you then? I was thinking about being your wardrobe consultant. <laughs> All right, so what does that mean? Does that mean that uh, jokingly they're trying to do something in the fashion space? Is there something going in that direction that could be kind of this dot swoosh component that what Nike has done? Uh, do we get that uh, maybe as a whole new you know, area of interest for XRP? I don't know. Sometimes you have to watch and read between the lines with him. Here's a clip that talks about Futureverse in 2024 and what is coming. Listen in. What can we expect in 2024? Bazookas. <laughs> but I think next year is going to kind of up the ante quite a bit. And those 30 or so product and experience launches all lay the groundwork for what's to come next, whatever that is. All right. So as you can see, big, uh, big news coming. If you guys didn't catch our Futureverse video with XRP, uh, there's a lot of nuggets in there that I think will help you understand kind of what this means and what it, especially what it means for Ripple as a whole. Last up here I want to hit on, and that is Ripto, uh, Ripple cryptocurrency hit a record high above three bucks. This is back in January of 2018. Let me go zoom in on that for you guys. January 2018. So when you compare that to where Bitcoin was at the time, XRP had a market capitalization of about $122 billion. And it was at that time solidly in second place to Bitcoin, which had a market cap of 251 billion. So it basically was half of the market cap of Bitcoin. All this pre-SEC noise, Ripple has been building since then. They haven't slowed down a clip. They've continued to expand into new markets. Is this a sleeping giant that could be waiting for an explosion? I don't know. You guys tell me. Drop some comments down below. I'd love to hear your feedback, especially 
We have a big XRP audi audience, so we we'll always love to give you guys this insight. And of course, if you're not in the Diamond Circle right now, get in because that's the one place that you're going to get additional content. And also, we're going to be talking a little bit more around strategies of how to play this for Ripple because there's going to be some very interesting ecosystem plays that you want to be uh, maybe tuned into. Check it out over there. Click the link down below. Follow me on X at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechBath.